RMJ movie reviews back again, y'all. And uh, I wanted to um this is more of a kind of a of a discussion, an open discussion. And I really like uh for people who are subscribed to my channel or new people who might happen to come across my channel to really leave some comments down below about how you feel about this whole thing. Um I couldn't contain myself on this issue. I really I wasn't I wasn't going to do a video about this. I wasn't going to do a video about this, but, um, you know, as I love movies so much, and, and I just love movies, I, I love them, I love TV shows, I love acting, and I love the creative arts and the creative medium, I love it, uh, I just felt I had to make a video about it, just to talk about it, so I want to talk about this new, in light of, this is disgusting, but in light of the Ghostbusters... I guess reboot, whatever they want to call it. We'll just call it for what it really is. Excuse my language. It's a fucking cash cow. That's what it really is. It's a fucking cash cow. We all know that's what it really is. But it would, would, would highly... Never mind. I'm about to get into this because I'm about to be really upset. And in light of the Ghostbusters reboot, remake, sequel, whatever it is. Uh, and in light of the ridiculous piece of garbage that is that looks like the lethal weapon the lethal weapon tv show yes and a tv show the exorcist the exorcist tv show with the theme music from the first movie and the rocky horror pictures i mean oh my god this is this this is oh this is so damn ridiculous um here's my thing i came across let me adjust the camera just a tad bit uh am i moving it yeah, just a little bit. I came across a, a YouTube channel, um, Double Toasted. I really like those guys. I think they're out of. Uh, I gotta adjust it again. I think they're out. They're out of Texas, but um, they do movie reviews and they comment on. So, and I really enjoy their channel. I really enjoy their channel a lot. I really enjoy uh, Danielle, who sits in the seat. I really even enjoy her a, a whole lot more. But. Um, I'm getting off subject. Either way, I enjoy their show. And, um, I, you know, I like to watch it from time to time. But they were talking about this new Ghostbusters 2 trailer. And I had, you know, look, again, like I've said, probably for 575th thousand time now, I was born in 1981. I'm 34 years old. I'll be 35 at the end of the summer. So I am part of the group of now grown adults who grew up on the first Ghostbusters and the second film. Pretty much anything that came out within the decade of the 80s from probably 1980 until 1989, anything that is nostalgic, action movie, cartoon, comedy, whatever, all that stuff, I'm a product of that time. So any movie from that time that I love or that holds a certain place in my heart, yes, I do get upset when I see it being remade. Now, I'm not one of these people who have... And the reason I started this video is, like I said, because I saw the Double Toasted comment about the Ghostbusters second trailer that just came out. Um, I'm not one of these people who goes on and just be like, you know, this is all women Ghostbusters, so it's going to suck. You know, you all can go to hell. You know, I'm, I'm not one of those. I'm more of a person who, like, if I'm talking with one of my buddies or something like that, I get upset about it, but I don't go and put hateful comments online. I might say something like, you know, this doesn't look good, but I, I'm not part of the ilk who... who tries to be mean-spirited, like, hateful kind of stuff. I'll go within kind of YouTube range, range of just kind of, like, being sardonic and disapproving about it. But I won't, like, say things like, oh, women, Ghostbusters go to hell. That, that, that's taking it too far. I'm, I'm not into that. Um, that being said, um, look, we already know for years... After Ghostbusters 2, and I will say right here, this is going to be a long video, y'all. I, I, this might be like 30 minutes, maybe, because I talk a lot. But either way, um, that summer, when the second... I, I saw the... Blah, 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 I'm getting all over the place because I'm so, like, amped about this. I saw the first Ghostbusters film around the time when it first came on video. My father rented it from the video store. We all watched it as a family. I love the film. And when I was in the after-school program in elementary school, we used to always watch... Uh, the edited TV version of Ghostbusters, not the the video version, but the the one that skips, you know, yes man, this yes he has no dick and the unbuttoning of the pants and I want you inside me. We watched 
the version with all that stuff taken out. And uh, I grew up on the real Ghostbusters cartoon, which, um, yes, I am a grown-ass man who owns this. And I'm going to make a further comment about this because in Double Toasted, they made a reference about this. Um... And then when the second film came out in 1989, I, I think I was going into the third grade that summer. It was the summer before I went into the third grade. Uh, by that time, I was kind of a little bit more interested in going to see Batman with Jack Nicholson. So uh, I remember I saw Batman that summer instead and did not go see Ghostbusters 2. I saw Ghostbusters 2 at my next door neighbor's house. A friend of mine named Danny McNamara. So Danny, if you're out there and you see my video, just say hi. But he lived next door to me. And uh, we watched it. And um, it was at the time I, I was still a little kid. So I, I don't know if I was seven or eight, somewhere around there. I was seven or eight or nine, somewhere. And I wasn't, I was still so young that I didn't have my own opinion to say I didn't like it. I just kind of, you know, everybody in the room seemed to like it. So I was just kind of like, yeah, it's Ghostbusters. I liked it. Yay. Uh, and, and realizing over the years now that, and my mother taped it off the Showtime Cable Network too. I'll show you guys that VHS tape sometime. But either way, she actually recorded it over with Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. I think that, and we all know how great Star Trek V is. But anyway, um, and I remember when I used to have, when I had those two movies, <clears throat> and I would go back to them. I would never watch Ghostbusters 2. And I'm saying, I've been watching the Ghostbusters, the movies and the cartoon for years. Ghostbusters 2, I really only watch it if like there's nothing else on. I do own the double disc, but I never, I never repeat watched Ghostbusters 2 when I was a kid. And I never re repeat watched uh, Ghostbusters 2 um, as I got older. I always will watch the first one over. I watched the first one over and over again when I was a kid, and I watched the first one over and over, over and over, still again now as an adult. And I watch it when it comes on the, the VH1, um, remember the 80s good times or whatever it is when they show it in all those other movies from back then. I, I always watch Ghostbusters 1. That being said, my whole long spiel and point is just the fact that <clears throat> Ghostbusters 2 is not good. I don't care how many people defend it. Bill Murray even does not like it. Now, I've heard Dan Aykroyd defend it. Dan Aykroyd has been very passionate about it. Um, as a fan who grew up with this stuff as it was coming out, as a viewer, in my personal taste, I disagree with the fact that Ghostbusters 2 is actually good. I think it has good special effects. I, I like the costumes. I like the pink slime. But it is not funny. The jokes, to me, are not funny in Ghostbusters 2. And kind of the camaraderie, SNL kind of vibe of the original Ghostbusters is not in the second one. Everybody is on autopilot in that movie. Everybody. Everybody except for um, the guy who, uh, Peter McNeil, I think is his name, from the movie Dragon Slayer. He's the only one who's like truly having a ball. Because Bill Murray... When you watch that movie, he looks like he hates every second of it. And, and don't get me wrong, like I, I like some of the action parts and, of course, the montage in it is cool. But let's be honest, Ghostbusters 2 is not a good movie. It's not funny. It's just passable. It's a weak sequel. Some people say it's good. I disagree. It's a passable sequel. Only rewatchability is if you just want to remember when you saw it. Like if I just if I just want to watch Ghostbusters 2 just to remember when I saw it over my friend Danny's house when we were kids. That's the only time I'd watch it. And I saw some chick on YouTube who said Ghostbusters 1 is stupid and 2 is better. She is absolutely out of her fucking mind when she says Ghostbusters 2 is better than Ghostbusters 1. Excuse my language there. Again, I went on and on with that, but that's my point just to make that Bill Murray knew a Ghostbusters 3 would have been garbage. And the only reason it would have been garbage is because all this stuff of the, the Ghostbusters reboot. And the thing is, the reason people are hating the way this trailer looks, and for me, it's not even the fact that it's women. It's not even the fact that the, the roles are reversed or that it's even Ghostbusters. It, I mean, it upsets me that they're even... They should just leave it alone and do something else. Something original. That's what I'd like to see. Ghostbusters is a product of its time. It's in the 80s. 
Uh, one point I will make about the cartoon. The cartoon, the real Ghostbusters, the first couple of seasons where Arsenio Hall was the voice actor and the guy from Garfield, the cartoon, is good. It's a good TV series. It has very, and it's a very dark, especially that first season I just showed y'all, very dark storylines. Very unique. It's a very good show. Very, very dark. Now, if they, if this reboot or whatever, looked like it was going to take one of them storylines. Like, I'll give you an example. The storyline that we all remember for us who used to watch the real Ghostbusters cartoon back in the day is where they used to have the, the storyline with the boogeyman character, right? And that was very dark, right? Or there was, like, one episode I was watching, like, last year on the, the season where, like, All Hallows' Eve, um, um, the, the ghost of Sam Hain is, like, the star of this episode, and he brings all the evil spirits back. Now, if they were to do something like that that was unique and original, and this movie came out around, like, Halloween, and it looked like it had, like, a dark edge to it like that, but it's still comedy, I would be game. I would be like, let's do this. I, I want to see this. It just looks like rehashed garbage. And the fact that, I, I forget her name who was in top five, but her doing the whole... I don't know if this is a race thing. I don't know if this is a female thing. Look, my only reason, I, I don't have a problem with racial humor, but it just has to be funny, and that to me is just, you know, late 80s, mid, late 80s, early 90s, cheap, just racial humor. That's not funny. It's not funny. You know, like when Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte did it in 48 Hours 1 or some of the stuff... They did on *The Living Color*, or you know, or stuff Robert Townsend and them did, and stuff in *House Party*. You know, that stuff was funny, but that is just, just. And she's a very talented comedian. I'm not knocking her. I just understand that you know, hey, they gave her the script, so she's saying what it is. But I just think that's just cheap. And that's my biggest thing is that it looks like it's just like *Ghostbusters 2*. *Ghostbusters 2*, beat for beat, mimicked the original film, and it just wasn't as dark, it wasn't as funny, it wasn't as adult, it was very kid-friendly, very generic, and the cast was just going through the motions, well, excuse me, except for Peter McNeely, Rick Moranis, and Annie Potts with her fine self, they were the only ones who felt like they were giving it all, everybody else was on autopilot, everybody was, you know, um, and that's the biggest thing, is like, even if they were gonna do it, Go for it and try to make it something original. But it's just the fact that all this... Mar and that's what I really find more offensive is that the people who are pushing this stuff, the marketing people, they think that we're big enough a-holes that we don't understand what they're doing. Because those of us who are like my age, mid-40s and up, we didn't see the first and second movie and the little cartoon thing 20-something, 1,500 times over the past 30 years. And I don't even know if these new kids coming up now even know who Ghostbusters is. So what they're trying to do is be slick and hit beats from the first and the second movie, and not even not even stealing anything original from the cartoon series in the first couple of seasons. Well, even if they were going to steal for themselves and stole, steal from the cartoon to do something dark and original and edgy and funny, I'd have a little bit more respect. But it's the fact that they're doing generic, I don't know if it's a race thing, woman thing, generic. They're taking beats from the first one. They got uh, Her uh, not Hercules, what's his name, Thor coming in playing uh, Janine's role, and it's like, this is just getting in it, and then they have Ecto-1, I mean, they're just, just, just mimicking, they're just mimicking, that's all they're doing, and that's the biggest offender, and it's like, even if they change, just don't make it Ghostbusters, if it was just like some crime-fighting Ghostbusters new thing we ain't never heard of with an all-female cast, I'd have been game, of course, everybody, we still would have been like, oh, it's an imitation Ghostbusters, but at least it would have been original. I never saw Pixels, I heard it was garbage, but when I saw Pixels, I got amped because that was kind of a, a, an original concept. Even though they say that's Ghostbusters, but then even if it does suck, at least they tried to do something different, you know? So, for me, that's my biggest gripe with the Ghostbusters thing. It just does not look good, and they're mimicking everything from the first film. If they even at least... <clears throat> tried to make it kind of a new kind of Ghostbusters thing without using the same. They even used the exact same logo from one and two in the cartoon. 
And they say it's a reboot. I mean, my goodness, at least change the logo, make some creepy looking monster and be like, oh, hey, hey, if they called the movie Ghostbusters 2016 or Ghostbusters 2016, the parallel dimension, something like that, something to excite me that it's going to be something different, I'd say game. But it looks generic and corny and imitating what has already come before. I.e., that's what Bill Murray has been saying for years. That's why Bill Murray was, was been telling all of them to screw off. Bill Murray was right. And it's regurgitated garbage. Now, listen to me. I'd like to be wrong. I'd like to be wrong and have a great time at the movies. I won't, go, won't see it, but I'd like to have a great time and enjoy the movie. It, I don't know. That's my gripe about that. Now let's move on to Lethal Weapon TV series. I just call bullshit right off the of rip. Excuse me again for some harsh language. That looks like trash, 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 and utter appallingly sickening. I want to just purge out the food I just ate style trash. That looks garbage, man. Pure trash, man. Look, the first Ghostbuster, I mean, excuse me, look at this, how mad I am. The first Lethal Weapon from 1987, absolutely, utterly fantastic. Great action picture, great character-driven action picture, which is very close to, like, kind of those gritty 70s French Connection style uh, movie, the first French Connection. The character of the French Connection with that 80s action element added in. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Allergies. Great. Lethal Weapon 2. I really like Lethal Weapon 2, especially the second half when it just gets down and dirty and dark and the cops are getting killed. Uh, I have a slight issue with not really knowing the bad guy's clear motive. And I kind of have an issue of the, the one guy being Riggs' wife's killer. Kind of had an issue with that, and I kind of had an issue with Riggs just getting his ass kicked in that final fight by that dude. I, I just did not buy it. I, uh, compared to the fight in the first one, I was just like, oh my. I mean, I get it. They were trying to make it feel like he was going to die. Those are my issues with that about Lethal Weapon 2. Lethal Weapon 3, I saw it at the theater when it came out. I begged my parents to take me to go see it, so we saw it. And um, I kind of left the theater kind of like, a little bit bummed. Lethal Weapon 3 has some really good action in it. I mean, that that final that final fight in the housing development where it's on fire, I, I still will say, I think out of all the action finales out the four movies, I think that is the best action, and excuse me, not the movie, the best action finale of the four movies. I mean, that's that's just, a, it's just the rest of the movie is kind of meh. But uh, that final with the hot wind and the, the fire and, and it, that is just a badass action sequence. And when I ever watch Lethal Weapon 3 again, it's just to watch that scene and um, kind of the confrontation that Mel Gibson and Danny Glover have when, when Murtoff is drunk. I really like that scene. Um, I really kind of feel like those are really the strongest elements of Lethal Weapon 3 is just the action sequences and when Danny Glover kills uh, his son's friend. Those, those scenes I like. Uh, unfortunately, the stuff with Renee Russo and Lethal Weapon 3, I, I kind of don't like that stuff. It's not against her. It's just the way her character was written and played. Just bleh. Lethal Weapon 4, look, we all know Lethal Weapon 4 is garbage. Uh, and when I say it's garbage, I just mean it's not a good Lethal Weapon movie. It doesn't take itself seriously. It's too comedic. Chris Rock, I love him. He's a great comedian. He shouldn't have been in that movie. Joe Pesci was too... It was a goofy movie. We all know they threw that movie together in, I think, like four months or something like that just because Warner Brothers had had a lot of bombs and Mel Gibson was available for like four months or something. That movie was just thrown together. So uh, the action in Jet Li and just seeing them do a movie together one last time is really the... The fact... It, it's a reunion movie. That's why I call Lethal Weapon 4. It's just a reunion movie. That's the only reason to watch it. Jet Li in the action and to see them together again. The actual quality of the movie itself is terrible. We all know it's terrible. It doesn't make any sense. It's a garbage film. Everybody who made it, they all... It, 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 Lethal Weapon 4 is what it is. And everybody knows it. Okay? That being said, Lethal Weapon 4 was pretty much done with number 3. 
They forced out number four, and, you know, hey, it's, it's a fun, goofy watch. But that is done. It is done, right? They tried to get him back for number five. They tried to get Shane Black, and, you know, we got all the drama, and I don't know if you guys can find it. There's a really good interview on YouTube where uh, Danny, some, some woman, tried to ask Danny Glover questions about Mel Gibson's uh, tirade. Danny Glover just like straight color purple shut this woman down. <laughs> and she was like, and look, she tried to go back again. She was just like, well, my friend said, and he was like, I mean, he went color purple on her. He was like, he was like, but that's your friend. I mean, Danny Glover got pumped. He got, he was scary. I was like, dang, he, he got, he got a little bit of that color purple in him for real. Cause he shut that woman down. A little bit of a switchback started coming out of him. He shut that woman down, man. I was like, damn. But, um. Uh, Look, there was no chance of ever being a five. I didn't want them to make a five, you know. Everybody's out there prime. Um, that being said, this TV show just looks like trash. You know, you're talking about... What I don't like is that... And I have heard this firsthand, y'all. This is not me just being a, 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 a... Yeah, I'm a fan and I'm aspiring and I love these things. But I heard from a character actor who has been in many famous films. A character actor who... Who um, was in New Jack City? Um, a character actor who was in The Hard Way with Michael J. I know that's not a great movie, but I, I enjoy that movie. Uh, this is a, a very popular character actor from a very prestigious theater company. I heard firsthand from this actor at a at an actor's convention that a lot of the people who are running the show. Um, in certain higher up places that release movies and produce movies, blah, 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 are not actual actors or filmmakers. These are business majors. People who went to college and majored in business. Business, business. So these aren't people who are coming with a creative heart and blood and, and, and you know, no. So that's why we're seeing a lot of, they're just raping the 80s because... You look, it's 30 years down the line. The oldest movie fans right now are people who grew up in the 80s, which would be people like me, mid-30s, and then people who are in their 40s. But the people in their 40s are kind of like done with it. So they're kind of really more aiming for people my age who are kind of right in that middle range of like, we're kind of getting older, but we're not old enough yet to be middle-aged so they can still pull on our heartstrings and... And throw out this stuff like Lethal Weapon because they know it'll be people my age who used to watch Lethal Weapon on cable or I snuck it out my dad's VCR or whatever and I love the film. And they think that we're going to tune into this trash. That's exactly And it's a title. It's a name recognition title. Watch an interview with John Carpenter. John Carpenter said they have a quota that they have to make. They This is this is actually literally like, like there is somebody who gauges the marketability of these films. How many people watch it? How many people that respond? This is how they market the films. So they know The Exorcist, Ghostbusters, Lethal Weapon, and pretty soon, well, I bet you we'll see a damn TV show for Beetlejuice or something like that. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised they haven't even remade The NeverEnding Story yet. But i tell you why they haven't touched that. Because The NeverEnding Story will require entirely too much creativity, too much originality, originality, it would be too much work to actually put out something that's good because The NeverEnding Story is a fantastic 80s dark fantasy film. That movie's great. I still love that movie. They would never touch that because it requires too much creativity. They can mock Lethal Weapon because the reason Lethal Weapon works is because Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, all the character actors in that movie, and Richard Donner. Fantastic old school director, character actors like, and I will say Mel Gibson is a movie star, but at his heart, that man is a character actor. Danny Glover is a character actor as well. You got character actor, Gary Busey, before he lost his mind, character actor. All those people in those movies are character actors who are playing and living and breathing characters put to film. 
That's why Lethal Weapon works, and that's why this TV show is going to fail. Because all I see in the previews is them knocking beats from the film. Oh, uh, Mel Gibson lost his wife. Okay, and Damon Wayans being in that thing, look, I know exactly what they're doing there too. Because I did a review for The Last Boy Scout. They know that Damon Wayans did a partner movie with Bruce Willis in the early 90s. Now, only hardcore action fans or people who grew up with action films at that time will remember The Last Boy Scout. All the other general public has forgotten about that film. But they think they're slick. They put Damon Wayans in there for people like us. Like, oh, The Last Boy Scout. They think we'll probably be stupid enough that we won't even remember. Oh, he, he did some movie. They'll probably think that we'll think that he was in Lethal Weapon. When in actuality, he was in The Last Boy Scout with Bruce Willis. That's why they threw him in there. And Damon Wayans took it because he needs a check. Which I do not blame the man. I would take that check too. Hey, we doing a lethal weapon pilot. I would read that script and say, this is some garbage. How much you gonna pay me? 25 million. I'm game. Shoot that pilot. Hey, is it gonna get picked up? Nope. I'm cool because I still got 25 million in the bank. And I can shoot a full season. It doesn't even matter. Because even if this horrible show gets canceled... I still got $35 million in the bank. So, Damon Wayans, I love you, brother. I would have took it, too. You know? And I don't blame anybody who's in it. Hey, they all need a check. Put that money in a savings account. So, I would have took it, too. But as far as the people who are creating it, they all ought to be ashamed of themselves. Because they, they know it's just aping a title. That's all it is. They want to get Damon Wayans for us because some recognition. But all these kids of today... The don't know anything about A Living Color. They don't know anything about The Last Boy Scout. They probably barely barely know anything about Lethal Weapon. And if they do, they probably just be like, oh, is Lethal Weapon... Uh, uh, it's an action movie, isn't it? I'm telling you. I've talked with my nephew and their friends. I'm telling you. they These kids who are 20, 21, 19, 17, they have no idea about this stuff. They do not. Hey, look... I give you an example. I was talking with my nephew and his friends one day. We all went out to breakfast, right? And I was talking about the Expendables movie, right? I started talking about Dolph Lundgren and Stallone and all the other people, Chuck Norris and Van Damme. And they're like, who's Dolph? Who's Van? I was like, oh, he was in Rocky IV. Rocky? Right? What? Is that Rocky Balboa? Swear to God! Is that Rocky? Is Rocky IV Rocky Balboa? Come on, guys. And they think they're slick with this stuff. That's what they're doing because John Carpenter said they know it has name recognition. So it's going to be people who grew up with this stuff. And I'm going to tell, like, example, my nieces and nephews, this movie's great. This movie's great. They'll go check it out based off what I said. So they already got, they got the nostalgia factor of us passing it on to this new generation. So they'll implant them in there. They'll get them to watch it so they can boost their numbers. They can boost their sales. It doesn't matter if it lasts. They just want to hit that high number and then after that it could be canceled all the hell that's what makes it so garbage it's all about a number it's and don't get me wrong look, look look this is the business you got to make your money it's about the bottom line there's a bug in here <laughs> hey look i'm trying to make money too ain't nobody trying to work out here and be poor i get that but there's so many starving artists that have great ideas man i've seen really like that's i'm telling you that's why you got TV shows like Breaking Bad. You got TV shows like True Detective, uh, season one. I know I've rewatched season two. It is garbage, but I still like it. Um, you've got all these other TV shows that are killing it, that are better than films because they are original, right? Okay, original stuff. But when you take Lethal Weapon, come on guys come on true detective awesome we'll take lethal weapon turn it into a tv show what are you guys doing what are you doing next thing you know i guarantee i can look at my list of dvds right here i bet you i bet you by the time i'm 70 years old the fast and the furious will be a tv show i, I wouldn't be guaranteed look i'm looking at it right now Red Sonja with Brigitte Nielsen. Watch that. That'll be a TV show on stars, right? They already tried Rush Hour. That was garbage. I bet you... Uh, what, what else can I look at? What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Watch. They'll turn that into a TV show. What, what else can we find here? Um, look, we can take any one of these movies right here, y'all. 
Uh, well, the sale with Jennifer Lopez. Watch, that'll be a damn TV show. I, I mean, th my problem is that they, uh, it's business stuff. That's what ticks me off about it. And as far as the Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, being a television series, uh, you know, I saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, it, it's playing. It plays at this independent art house here, like all the damn time. They just do not stop running. It just play. It's been playing there. Ever since I was in elementary school in the 80s. And it just, you know, I saw it. Um, I didn't get it. Not that I didn't understand it. I just didn't get why people liked it. Now I get it. It is crazy. It's outrageous. It's over the top. I, it's good. You know, that, that that's personal taste. But, you know, look, I get it. I get it. it. It's kind of where everybody can join together and be crazy and have a great time. I get that. Uh, now, could that be turned into a really kooky, nutty TV show? Uh, for regular TV, I don't see that happening. Maybe if it was on HBO, maybe. Rocky Horror Picture Show, I give that a little bit of a pass. Because that's not like so beloved by everyone. A lot of people love it. A certain particular element of society likes that. I'm, that was Charlie Murphy. Society, you know, like that. But, um, you know, I don't like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. But I get why people do like it. So that I give a pass. But when you go to stuff like The Exorcist, you know, again, same point like I made about Lethal Weapon and Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? I wasn't born when the first Exorcist came out. But I was fully aware when number three came out. And the only reason I knew about number three was because I had heard what my parents and my brothers and sisters had said about the movie. I didn't actually even see Exorcist 1 all the way through until maybe I was... I don't know, maybe I was like 14, 15. And when they re-released it when I was 18 or 19, we went to go see it at the theater. And uh, I love that movie. Great movie. You know, but it, it, it's just the fact that this is just monetary based. And I just, I just don't like it, man. I just don't like it. I, I, I just, that's what... Really, it's the fact that they really have a better shot. And look, I don't mind like if sometimes you're rebooting a door or you do something like Creed where it's a spinoff. And even Creed, I mean, that's a that's that's a film that, um, you know, hits all the boxing conventions. But uh, Ryan Coogler, who's a, a badass director and a badass writer, and Michael B. Jordan, um, who's a very good actor, you know, that's still their own thing. You know, you threw Stallone in there to bring some some um, some. Um, some cred, you know, so you're bringing kind of what's familiar with something new. Now, I'm okay with that, but when I see stuff in the previews, like the Exorcist and, and the Lethal Weapon trailer and the Ghostbusters trailer, where all they're doing is just mocking, redoing, and, and in the previews, the guy, I'm not knocking the actor, when they got him kind of trying to redo stuff that Mel Gibson did, which, guys, we all know Mel, Mel Gibson has, the, the man is crazy. He, he's just a crazy drunk. That's what I think his problem is. He's just an angry, mean drunk. You know, but we cannot knock that him and Danny Glover in that first movie and in the second one, and I will say parts of the third one are utterly, absolutely pitch perfect, fantastic. Mel Gibson gives a gut-wrenching performance in that first film, man. And Danny Glover um, just is, is the perfect opposite of just like, what the hell is with this crazy guy? Heart-wrenching, spectacular performances from both of them. And to see that regurgitated into this and morphed into this trash TV show garbage is just like pissing on all of us you know it just that's my problem with it guys you know so uh i ranted on for i think 35 minutes for those of you who hung in there thank you very much but uh leave some comments down below about my opinion um i just like to talk about movies and stuff so subscribe to the channel share the video like the video and like uh the little like Share comments down below about this remake, reboot, uh, basically just raping the 80s craze of every movie or TV show or cartoon imaginable from that decade. We'll probably see a remake of the Super Mario Brothers movie, maybe with a cameo by uh, John Leguizamo. 
or uh, a digital uh, Bob Hoskins and a digital Dennis Hopper. And Lance Henriksen will probably pop up. He's still here. Oh, God, man. Uh, RMJ Movie Reviews. I'll be back with a movie review soon, guys.